I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bible, come with me if you would, to Exodus chapter 28 and verse 30. As we've been moving through Exodus chapter 28, we've been looking at the high priest and the garments of the high priest. And uh, yesterday in verses 22 through 29, we looked at the breastplate. But today we want to spend some time looking at verse 30 of this chapter. And verse 30 tells us that the breastplate contained the Urim and the Thummim. And we want to spend some time looking at what this is and what it pictures for us as the people of God. So let's just read Exodus chapter 28 and verse 30. It says, And thou shalt put the breastplate of judgment, and thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Thummim. And they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goeth in before the Lord. And Aaron he shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. Now, some would ask, and some have actually used a lot of speculation in asking the question, what is the Urim and the Thummim? And uh, the truth of the matter is that we have little explanation about this. And what I do want to do today is I want to take some time to look at what little the Scriptures does tell us about the Urim and the Thummim and see some of the things that we can learn, not only about them, but also to learn by way of application. But then at the same time, I do want us to understand that we do have little explanation about this. So I'm not going to go into the realm of speculation and what others have thought but rather just reveal to you what the scriptures have told us about this matter and to understand, as Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 29 say, that the secret things belong unto God. And the truth of the matter is that there are some things that God has not chosen to reveal to us. And if God has chosen to not reveal it to us, then obviously we're, we don't need to know. And to go into the realm of speculation in that case is very dangerous. So what I want to do very quickly today is, first of all, I want to mention that this Urim and Thummim is mentioned seven times. I'll give you the references and we will read them very quickly. First of all, we see them here in Exodus chapter 28 and in verse 30. The second time that they are mentioned for us is in Leviticus chapter 8. And in verse 8, it says, And he put the breastplate upon him. Also, he put in the breastplate the Urim and the Thummim. And of course, we saw in Exodus 28, 30, that that is what the priest was instructed to do. Then we see them mentioned in Numbers chapter 27 and in verse 21. Where it says, And he, call, and he shall stand before Eliezer the priest, who shall ask counsel for him, after the judgment of Urim before the Lord, at his word shall they go out, and at his word shall they come in, both he and all the children of Israel with him, even all the congregation. So here's a little bit of a hint. When we see in that verse where it says, at his word shall they go out, and at his word they shall come in. So there we get a bit of an indication that this Urim and Thummim were used to determine what the will of God was to get some information from God exactly what or how is a mystery to us. In Deuteronomy chapter 33 and in verse 8, they are also mentioned. And it says in Deuteronomy 33, 8, And of Levi he said, Let thy Thummim and thy Urim be with thy Holy One, whom thou didst prove at Massa, and with whom thou didst strive at the waters of Meribah. Then in First Samuel chapter 28 and verse 6, the Urim and the Thummim is mentioned once again. In 1 Samuel 28 and in verse 6, it says, And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, neither by Urim, neither by prophets. And then last of all, in Ezra chapter 2 and in verse 63. Ezra 2 and verse 63 says, In the ter Shasha saith unto him that they should not eat of the holy things till there stood up a, a priest with Urim and with Thummim. So those are the times in the word of God that they are mentioned. Now, in some manner, we know that they were used to receive information from God. Exactly what he tells them through this, we don't know. That's a mystery. But let me say this. We don't need a Urim and a Thummim today because we have 
God's word to reveal to us what God's will is. You want to know the word of God, or the will of God, get in the word of God, and God's will is never contrary to God's word. It says in Second Peter one nineteen, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in our hearts. So we don't need a Urim and a Thummim today because we have the word of God. We have a more sure word of prophecy. And uh, then we notice the names of these two things. They're called a Urim and a Thummim. That word Urim very simply means light. And of course, we know that as we think of light, that very quickly, um, that we can see that that is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. In John chapter 1, describing the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 5, it says, in verse 4, in him was life, and the light was the light of men. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. In verse 9, it says, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So there we see that Jesus is the light. So this Urim is a picture for us of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, in John chapter 8 and in verse 12, we find one of the I am statements. And Jesus spake unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So there we see that he is the light of the world. And then Thummim simply means perfection, which once again is a type of Christ, the perfect one. We know that the Bible tells us that in him was no sin, that he knew no sin, and that he did no sin. In Romans chapter 9, and in verse 5, it says this. It says, Whose are the fathers, and of whom as Christ the flesh is come, who is over all God blessed forevermore. So there we see that Christ in the flesh, notice this, who is over all God blessed forevermore. So there's a wonderful verse that reminds us of the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. It reminds us that Jesus is God. In Luke 1, and in verse 35, it says there, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Notice this. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So there we see very clearly that he is described as a holy one, that we know that he is one in whom was no sin. In John 7, 46, they said, Never a man spake like this man, and that was because of his holiness. Now, we do know this, and we've already read these verses, so I'm just going to allude to them. But if you go back and look at Numbers chapter 27, and in verse 21, and 1 Samuel chapter 28 and verse 6, it indicates for us that the urine and the thummim were used in some way to determine what the will of God, the will of God was in certain situations. And once again, as I said today, we have the word of God that very clearly tells us what the will of God is. And it is through Christ and his word that we know the will of God. John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, we find that it tells us this. It says there, God, who at sundry times and in divers men are spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who be in the express Express who be in the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty of God on high. Friends, today we don't need a Urim and a Thummim. Now those words mean light and perfection, and they remind us of the Lord Jesus Christ. The the Urim and the Thummim were used, we do know this much, in certain instances to determine what the will of God is. And the reason why we don't need a Urim and a, Urim and a Thummim today is because of the simple truth that if we want to know what God's will is in any situation, all we need to do is go to the Word of God, and the Word of God gives us the light that we need so that we can understand the path that God wants us to walk. And uh, those are a few basic uh, thoughts regarding this Urim and this Thummim. Have a great day.